previous unit, we explained the classical propositional logic with its language, semantics, logical consequence, and all that. Now, in this section, we are going to problematize this, this logic, right? And we are going to consider the first paradox we are going to discuss in this course, which is the Sorides paradox, and the problem of vagueness broadly considered, right? Now, let's go for the Sorides paradox. Suppose that we've got a series of objects, of patches of color. The first is clearly red, right? The last one is clearly yellow, and so clearly not red. But the funny thing is that for any object in the series, this object is extremely, extremely similar to its neighbors, so that you cannot discriminate them in color by the naked eye, right? So consider the situation, right? This is a, a very long series, and this one is clearly red. This one cannot be discriminated from this one. So it seems that all these conditionals, right? If the first one, if this one is red, then the, la the next one is red. All these series of conditionals seem to be true, right? Because they are so similar in color, right? Now the problem comes in classical logic with the fact that modus ponens, this, this pattern of inference, is classically valid, right? And so it follows from the fact that the first guy is red and the validity of this rule that if all these conditionals are true, then the last guy is red as well, right? In other words, it follows in classical logic that if this guy here is red and this other one is not red, then there is a false conditional, right? So there is a conditional that is false. Now, this is striking. This is truly remarkable because this means that there is one item that is red follow, followed by some other item that is not red, right? But how can you, I mean, if they are so similar in color, it seems that this is a, 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 an impossible situation. And further, how can we just prove based on logic that meanings have such extremely subtle, can make these extremely subtle distinctions, right? So this is very puzzling, this is very puzzling. This is the Sorides paradox, right? Now the second thing I would like you to consider is something related to what it is called borderline cases, right? So take the example of Tim, right? This is like a classical example in the literature. So Tim Williamson is thin. Well, Tim, Tim Williamson is clearly thin, right? But I don't know why he puts the example. So Tim Williamson is thin. So Tim is supposed to be like a borderline case of the pre for the predicate thin, right? So that some people is clearly thin, some, some people is clear not, clearly not thin, right? But Tim is somehow in the border, right? So we cannot decide simply, you know, we might know all the relevant facts about team measures. We might know everything we should know seemingly about the, the meaning of the predicate because we are competent speakers. But it's still, it is somehow unclear what the team is thin, right? Because team lies somehow on the border, right? So that's intuitively a borderline case. Now, it is supposed to be part of the phenomenology of borderline cases that competent speakers won't just accept, you know, for example, that team is thin and reject that team is not thin, right? So in borderline cases, competent speakers tend to hesitate between acceptance and rejection, right? So there is a sort of symmetry. There is a sort of symmetry in the dispositions, right, in borderline cases between acceptance and rejection. Now, classical logic, classical semantics in particular, tells you that either team is thin is true or team is thin is false, right? So classical semantics forces you to introduce an asymmetry where seemingly our use of the predicates is known, right? And this, this seems utterly impossible if meaning is determined by use, right? Okay, so this is, this, these two problems seem to, to put into question the, the classical logic and semantics, right? Now I leave you, I'm, I'm gonna leave you with a, a very nice example of a Sarites paradox. I don't know, I don't know if, 
you have seen Noah Kalina's uh, everyday video. This is a very nice example of a, of a Sorayda's paradox in video form. So Noah starts to take pictures of himself when he was in his early 20s. And the question is whether you can identify a point in the video where Noah is in his early 20s and a second later he's not in his early 20s. So that's the Sorayda's paradox.